Looking for an inexpensive full feature GPS chart plotter that will give you all of the basic information you could possibly need for a day out on the water? Then you need to check out this video on Onwa's all new KM series of GPS chart plotters. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyle. I'm Glenn and today we're going to look at Onwa's new series of KM GPS chart plotters. Now Onwa is not a manufacturer that's well known in the US but they want to change that. Known in other parts of the world for manufacturing high quality electronics, they're a company that can provide good marine electronics at a competitive price. Now Onwa reached out to us and sent us out a KM8C display to review. Now, this is a GPS chart plotter with sounder built in. They're offering a special discount to Aqua Lifestyle viewers of 10% off, not including shipping, off their already good pricing, running from October 1st, 2022 through December 31st, 2022. So use the code on the screen and in the description below for that discount. Available in 8 and 12 inch versions, you can get basic chart plotters, chart plotter fish finders, and you can get chart plotters even with AIS capability. Radar can be added just by adding one of the Onwar radar systems. You can even start with a basic KM8 or KM12 GPS chart plotter and add modules later to give the display added capability. The first thing that struck me when looking at the display is it appears to be a full function yet basic display. With no touch screen and with tactile controls and an external antenna, it harkens back to a simpler time in marine electronics. Let's see what comes in the box here. First is a bag with all your mounting hardware and a blank connector. That's a NEMA 183 connector. Uh, then we've got your power cord here, pretty basic with a two pin plug. Uh, next up is your GPS antenna, something you don't see in a lot of newer systems. You've got a, a good external antenna that will screw down on a regular antenna mount and your GPS BNC connector. Uh, got a good 30 feet of cable on that, so plenty of cable. Then you got your flush mount uh, gasket your sun cover and unit of course. Then you've got a transducer when you get the C type model, uh, your transducer plug, a really nice stainless steel bracket, heavy duty bracket, and something you don't see a lot, a chafe guard on your transducer cable that could be slid into whatever position you need. Uh, nice feature. Then of course your gimbal bracket with four knobs, so you put it at the angle that you want and you lock it in with a second set of knobs. And uh, of course your sun cover and your unit itself. Also got a couple of quick reference guides included in the box, uh, the transducer installation guide, and a very nice template for flush mounting. You can also download the manual for a full manual online. Okay, so let's take a look and see what's on the back of the unit here, your connections. If we flip it over, um, all your connections are labeled up here as to what they are. So you got your Ethernet, You've got your NEMA 2000. Under the plug here, this would be your NEMA 183, and that's that plug that's included, uh, that we showed you, uh, included in the box. Transducer, this would be a VHF uh, type connector if you had an AIS, but it's not on this one, so it's just blank plug. Power plug, fuse, which you can easily swap out if you need to, and your GPS antenna connection right here, and then you got a ground lug up here if you need that. Uh, so pretty basic, pretty intuitive, uh, simple setup. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's hook the unit up. We'll take a look at it. We'll see what it's capable of. And we'll go through what all the function buttons are. Now the front of the display. As you can see, this is a non-touch screen display. It has a full control button set up to the side of the screen. Let's power it up and see the different displays. Now the power button is this guy right here in the lower right hand side. When we power it up, We'll get an initial introductory screen and then it'll go through its boot up procedure and you'll come up with a generic warning for navigation and then you'll have a warning that you'll need to acknowledge. There it is and you can read through that and once you acknowledge it you can hit either of the check buttons here on the control panel. So we'll check that. Now I have it in simulation mode right here. Um, but let's uh, talk about the different buttons and what they will do. Uh, up here we have your menu button. If you press it once, it'll give you the menu for the screen that you're on. We're on the plotter, so there's your plotter menu with all your different options. 
If I press it again, it gives us an AIS menu. If I had an AIS attached to this, it connected to this, would be able to do all the settings uh, for that AIS. If I press it one more time, it gives you your main menu. So it gives you a track record, setup, erase functions, alarms. Uh, you can edit data, all kinds of information. If we scroll down through here, you can see all your different options with your main menu. To the right at the top is the mode button. This will display the screen selection window. Below that, you have your toggle switches to move their cursor around, and a check mark button in the center just acts like an enter button. Below that, to the left, you have a button with an X on it. This is to back out of whatever you've just done or to clear back to the next screen. Next to that is another check mark button. This is the same as the enter button that you have up here, and we'll do the same thing just to stand alone off to its side. In the next row, you have a zoom out button, and just below that, a zoom in. To the right of those buttons, with the FX on it, this one here, is a function button, and it has many uses depending on what screen you're on. Below that is a man overboard button, which is designated with a life ring on it press that and it will save that point and steer you back to it automatically just like a man overboard would do on any other chart plotter. Let's go ahead and see what the different modes are or the different screens or displays. So you can see here a window pops up with all your different screen options. Ones that are grayed out are possibilities if you had um, optional accessories either wired in or built into the unit. This particular unit is the KM8 with the sounder built in. Uh, so the wind and AIS will not be available to display. I have it in a simulation mode right now. We are not outside. We're not directly hooked to satellites. So it is in a simulation mode. So it's going to be a little bit limited in what it shows you. But we're going to go through briefly and quickly through the different screens. And then we'll go back and discuss the settings and options for each of the screens in a little more detail. So, of course, first we're in the chart plotter mode here. So I've got a set uh, just off the coast of Miami in the simulator. So we'll move from the chart plotter, which does have a world base map loaded in it. And you do have the capability through a slot on the side here to add Navionics Plus and CMAP Max cartography, along with some other formats of cartography. So you definitely want to check with the website. Um, see what kind of cartography is available for the area that you're boating in for this particular machine. The basic world map on there gives you a rough idea where you are, but it's not adequate for navigation. Uh, doesn't just doesn't have the detailing you need. All right, if we scroll over here, we've got a compass screen, and I selected it by highlighting it and just pressing the check mark in the center of the uh, rocker switch here. Uh, as you can see, very nice compass, shows you your heading. Uh, you can set it for north up, course up, track up, however you want, and you have your data bar off to the side here, which is fully customizable also. If we go back to our mode screen, and I select the navigation screen, I pull that up, and again, your latitude, longitude, the nice, nice large, easy to read imagery numbers, and you have your compass rose at the top, and again, your data bar at the bottom, and your depth showing in your bar down at the bottom here. If we go back to mode, and I select satellite, I bring that up, and that's gonna show us how many satellites we're locked onto and the signal strength of each one. Um, it also gives you a little graphic here. You are dead center of these rings, and these are where the satellites are in location to you. So further out on the rings here the closer to the horizon closer in the more they are overhead so we've got a lot of satellites overhead right now and a very strong signal if this was real not in the simulation mode all right going on to the next window we're going to go over here to highway and this gives you a really nice clear easy screen again hearkening back to some older gps's that uh, before they had the chart plotters this was all we had to steer by on some of the original gps's is a highway representation and your um, waypoint that you're steering to would be at the top of the screen here and as you get off course you can see yourself kind of running off the road so nice easy way to steer to a particular waypoint again with your data bar 
on the right. Next is our sonar screen, and if I bring that up, again, we're in a simulation mode here, but this gives you a good idea of what kind of image you're looking at with the sonar. Latitude and longitude at the top, speed, uh, heading, and then your voltage is showing there also. You've got your depth reading in nice large numbers at the bottom here, and your scale off to the right. Moving on, we are going to radar screen. Now this does have radar capability. You have to add an Anwar radar to it. Um, and if we had one hooked in, you would have your radar functioning on that screen. Again, with your data bar and your radar information. If we go on to map radar and we select that, what it would be is a uh, your plotter screen with a radar overlay on top of it. Again, we don't have a radar hook to it, so that's not possible. And if we move over here, we have our gauges. Now the gauges, I select that, hit the check mark. You can tie this in through NEMA 2000 to your engine systems. Um, and have the gauges represent your engines. So you've got uh, all of these guys and they are fully customizable. So that is your engine gauge screen. Uh, these screens here allow you to customize and do splits and you can set it up with splits of whatever you like. So you can have a two window split vertical, two window split horizontal, a triple, another triple, or if we go down to the quadruple, you can set it up so you have four windows. And again, you can customize each of these windows to display whatever you want. So you can set it up with any combination that you like. And each of those will be saved in the menu. All right. So those are your basic screens. Okay, now let's talk about the menus for each of these screens and the different settings that you can have. So we're going to go back up to our first screen option, which is the plotter. And as you can see, you've got your chart information, latitude, longitude, nice large images, your heading, your speed, time of day, and date, all showing in your bottom bar here. Now, if we hit menu, it's going to bring up all the possibilities that we have for this particular um, screen. And if I bring it down here, we can turn our current track on. Um, on the map, we can turn all this information on or off as we want. Um, you have all your different options there. You can take a look at that. Waypoints, we can show all our waypoints. We can have if I select it here, we can have it show in large or small uh, representation on the, chart, on the chart. I like large, so we're going to keep it at large. You can select and have um, just certain waypoints in there. You have your different options. Uh, we're going to leave it at all. Heading line, we can have it off or on. If we turn it on here, uh, you've got variable, max, and timeline. Put the variable on there, and there it shows our heading line. You can see that popped up there. Uh, the cursor, it can be standard or full screen. If I exit out of this, you can see your cursor here. If we change that, and we go back to the menu, and I do full screen, and we exit out of this, then you can see the full screen, it changes it to the full lines. I'm going to exit out of that. Back to our menu here. Icon, we can have icons small or large. I'll leave those the way they are. Ship shape, you can have a circle or a ship. Change it to a ship there. We can change the color to any of these colors we want. I like the red, it's easy to see. Uh, ship info display, auto or off like to leave it in auto. Range circles, you can turn those on too if you'd like range circles. Zoom step, less or more. Drawing, you can set all your options for that. Palette, you can have normal. Night, if you're running at nighttime. Daylight, so if you're in very bright sun, you can change it to daylight. 
NOAA. You can set the colors just like a NOAA chart or we can go back to normal. Next, map direction. You can have it north up, waypoint up, or course up. So we're going to keep it normal. Map choice. You can choose between CMAP, K charts, and Navionics. We'll keep it at K chart 2 for now. That's the default. And of course, map language. You can change languages uh, to English or local language. Data field, data field setup. Now you can have the data field show. Um, so let's go, let's bring the data field up on the chart plotter here. We just had that pop up and we can actually customize the data field now. You see things change, you lat longer at the top, and you got your data field off to the right. Um, you can actually customize, if we go in, you can data field setup, you can go in and see how it's highlighted in yellow now. Uh, I like the position, I like speed over ground, I like course over ground, bearing, range, let's say bearing we want to change that so I would select it and then you can go in and have it be any one of these guys here. So let's say we want voltage on there, I want to know where my battery voltage is, you see that just popped up and you can do that with any of these windows. Okay. So we'll go back to our menu here, and that is your menu options for your plotter. If we go back here, we'll exit out of that. We go back to our mode. If I go to our compass display and I hit menu, these are the options that you have for your compass screen, and it's basically changing the data fields. If we exit out of this, we go to navigation. I hit menu, data field setup. Again, we can make the adjustments for the data fields on this screen. If I exit out of that, I go back to mode, I go to satellites, hit menu, and this does give you different information so you can check and display different GPS information. If I go over to the highway and select that, we go to our menu, and again, it's data field set up there. If we go to our sonar, I bring our sonar screen up here, and I hit menu. These are the different options we have on sonar. You can change your frequency. So 50, 200, 50 kilohertz zoom, 200 kilohertz zoom, or dual. Uh, gain. You can adjust your gain, you can adjust it manually, you can set it for fishing, cruising, uh, your uh, one to one, 50 percent off or on. Now we go range, you can set it to auto or manual range and adjust your range. You have TVG, TVG is the noise up at the top, you can make adjustments for that. Um, keep in mind when you turn those things on, you're basically, and crank them up, you are reducing the sensitivity of the unit. So unless you're getting a lot of noise up at the surface, I would leave that off. Uh, picture advance, 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, 10 to 1. It just speeds the advance through. 2 to 1 or 1 to 1 is what I would leave it at. That's going to give you your best imagery under normal circumstances. If we go back to our menu here, fish marks, you can turn them off or on. You can have fish identified with fish symbols. There's a fish symbol and it shows you the fish and the depth of the fish. Um, you can have it as a circle. We don't have any of those showing up. So we're going to turn it off. GPS info, you can uh, display the GPS info. So it's going to give you your latitude, longitude up in the corner. You can turn that on or off. We'll leave it on. Sonar menu, you can select that. You can turn a A scope on and have a live real time depth reading in your A scope here. Nice feature to have. I actually like running the A scope most of the time. We'll leave that on. You have a zoom mode. 
you have a noise limiter, hue selection, so you can change the hue. Basically different palettes. You have signal level, so you can adjust the signal level. Variable range marker, you can have variable range marker or white line. And those are your sonar options. If we go back to menu, alarms, you can set your alarm from different depths. You can set a fish alarm within certain depths. You can set a temperature alarm um, and you can set the ranges for all of those. System menu, so zoom markers gives us all our different ranges and options for those. Data field, we can pop up the data field in here if we want. Um, if we go back and do show high data field, there's our data field popping up again if you want that. In the window you can have it, if you don't, you just go back in and hide the data field. And we have our network settings. So those are our sonar menu options. Moving on, radar, pull that up. If I hit the menu, the different options for radar would come up and you can adjust them as needed, just like we have for the other screens. We go to radar chart. Again, we don't have the radar on there, but if we hit the that, it would give us our radar and chart options for this particular screen. Now, moving on to gauges, we can go in and hit our menu for this and our options are to change the gauge data setup. But you can go in and change each of these and you can go in and change your data field here. Okay, so now we're going to go back, we're going to go to one of our screens here, multi uh, display screens. Uh, let's go to this one here with the triple display, the vertical with the two next to it. We're going to select that and we can customize these to show whatever it is we want. So on this one, I want to have, you see the yellow box here. If I hit the X, it'll move the box around. I think I'm going to change the chart here to the fish finder, the sonar. So by doing that, by changing it, I press and hold the X for a long press, and then the different options for that window will come up. So I'm going to select Sonar. So I'll bring up Sonar. There's my Sonar screen. Now the compass is nice, but I want to change uh, this for the chart plotter, let's say. So I am going to move that yellow box by pressing the X. Now I've got that one highlighted down here. I'm going to press and long hold the X and I said I wanted to put the chart in there so I'm going to pull that up and there's my chart. Uh, so I've got that triple set up the way I want it and if we um, exit out of here now we go back to our mode. I can bring up let's say the gauges again if I want to go back to it. If I go back to that setup, that window there it is, set up the way, just the way I want it. And we can customize each of these windows to show whatever format we want. So the side-by-side, -side, I don't have radar connected here, so I really don't need radar. I'm going to highlight that and then long press it. And I like having a split with my chart and my sonar. It's probably the screen that I'm going to be on the most. So I like that one. We're going to leave it just like that. Now I can go in and make adjustments on each of these by having it highlighted in yellow and then hitting the menu. And all the buttons, as long as that's highlighted, all these buttons and functions are going to be for that side of the screen. So pretty intuitive, pretty easy to set up, uh, just like the rest of the machine. Okay, now we're just briefly going to talk about how to create waypoints and routes in this machine. It's always a common question, and in this machine creating waypoints is pretty easy. You have uh, two buttons here, the check marks. When you're on your plotter screen, you can, based on where your cursor is or where your boat is, if you don't have the cursor moved, you can hit the check mark and it's automatically going to create a waypoint for you at that point. 
uh, gives it the first or the number next number in numerical sequence you can go in and name it and you can change the icon if you want to save it you just hit the uh, check mark again and it's saved let's move the cursor over here and say we want to save a point over here along our old heading line here so right about there I will hit check at this point I can go in and either quit save and go to or I can go up and name it now the function key here if I press the function key where when we're in a chart mode I can go to cursor I can go to waypoint I can go to route I can go to track um, we can change uh, information like marks names place names and zones I can pull up a tie table which this has a worldwide tie table and it is based on your latitude and longitude and it'll pull up your tides for your immediate area um, I can search by coordinate or by place name I can pull up a calendar I can pull up celestial and I can figure distance all through the function button here now to save a round it's not much different than saving a waypoint the way we just did it we're gonna go back to our main menu we're going to go to edit and instead of waypoints we are going to go over to routes we're going to call this route number one one we'll save that go down new we've entered the name and then we are going to select our waypoints we're going to use waypoint number one then we're going to go to waypoint number two then we're going to go to waypoint number three Select the next line, waypoint number four, and there's our route. And we can select go to route. Here's route number one, forward or reverse. We want to go forward, and there's our route. So as you can see, the Anwa KM8, or in this case the KM8C, because it does have the sonar capability as well, is a very simple pretty intuitive machine to use. It does harken back to a few years ago when machines were very simple, didn't have all the features that some of the more expensive units out there have. This is more of an eight inch, bright, clear, simple to use, basic chart plotter and fish finder. A fisherman, a cruiser, a sailor who's looking for something that's gonna give them the features that they need without a lot of bells and whistles at a very reasonable price. So if you're thinking of something along those lines, something comparable, I would say, to like the Simrad Cruise Line or some of the more basic, more simple Garmin units, this uh, is a good option to look at because you are getting a good amount of simplified chart plotting and fish finding, but with all the features that you still may want within it if you're not looking for the latest, greatest bells and whistles. Um, it'll do everything you need it to do uh, for a reasonable price. Well, that's Onwa Marine's new KM series of GPS chart plotters. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll know when our next videos are up and able to watch.